So friends, today's chapter is payment of tax, chapter number 12 in the study material and in this what we are going to see is section 49 to 53 read with rules number 85 to 88. What is expected from you to know after completion of this chapter? That is learning outcomes. First it says describe three kinds of ledgers to be maintained by taxable person electronic cash ledger electronic credit ledger and electronic liability register number two this says analyze and apply the methodology of cross utilization of credit number three comprehend and apply the chronological order in which the liability of a taxable person has to be discharged then identify and analyze the circumstances in which the penal interest is levied and last is understand the remedy available in case of tax wrongfully collected and paid to central or state government. Now let me explain you everything one by one. The moment person is registered Three online accounts are opened. One is called electronic cash ledger, another is electronic credit ledger and third is called liability register this is also electronic so three accounts are opened the moment person is registered right now whatever taxes are payable Taxes can be paid either out of credit or out of cash, right? Now this can be credited in two ways, in cash ledger there are two possibilities that either you deposit cash but cash is limited for a taxable period. You cannot deposit any amount of cash. We are going to discuss that in rule that for a tax, every tax period not more than 10,000 can be deposited in cash. Then it can be direct online transfer. It can be NEFT. It can be RTGS. It can be through credit or debit card. that is one way of crediting the cash ledger indirectly we have the provisions of tds and tcs tax deduction and tax collection at source so when that amount is collected or deducted by the people under section 51 or 52 for the supplier it will be credited in the cash ledger right so that is tds and TCS right so suppose I am a supplier to the government department and the value of supply happens to be more than 250,000 in a contract the government is going to deduct 1% by way of this amount and this will not be deposited as a tax this will be credited to my ledger account here in the cash ledger ultimately tax is payable by me not by the government it is not RCM right the government doesn't pay tax right the government is going to deduct 1% of the value of the total supplies which I'm charging from the government and then that amount will be credited here and actually I will have to file the return of my output supplies and pay the tax accordingly right same is about the TCS also that is for the electronic commerce operator for the supplies made through him he has to deduct one amount not exceeding 1% of the net value of the supplies made through him 
and that amount will also be reflected here right so this is about electronic cash ledger this is electronic credit ledger so whatever input supplies we have and which are eligible for credit this is credited by input tax credit right based on my output supplies there is a return specifically required to be filed for output supplies right so based on that liability register is created based on that and that amount of tax actually becomes payable for every tax period right now what you have to understand is that where this can be utilized where this can be utilized right so you write in continuation so this is my cash ledger this is my money right this I can use to pay tax or interest or penalty or other dues whatever it is cash ledger can be utilized there but this ledger can be utilized only for output tax right and when the tax has been paid out of this or this or both the liability gets reduced here so all three things are interconnected so that is the first point that said describe the three kinds of ledgers to be maintained by the taxable person actually these are online right in the later part in the next chapter we are going to talk about the returns right so what happens in case of return because that is also to be understood here itself in one single transaction there is a transaction in this transaction there are two parties involved one is supplier another is recipient two parties are there now both of the parties are required to file the returns output supplier will file his monthly return what are his output supplies right and this information will automatically be reflected in the input records of the recipient right by chance if this does not match then what happens there are two possibilities that the supplier has shown something the recipient has not yet shown otherwise the recipient has shown something supplier has not shown so there is a mismatch so mismatch is communicated to each other and accordingly liabilities are adjusted right so that we are going to discuss in the chapter of return that is the next chapter but here it is very well understood right that the sub supplier has to file a return recipient has to file a return for the for the all the inputs and he has to file for all all the output supplies and there is a cross matching system and if those do not match then accordingly adjustments are made clear now the second point says analyze and apply the methodology of cross utilization of credit now as far as credit is concerned here itself you can write in continuation separate records have to be kept for IGST CGST SGST and UGST now this credit can be utilized to pay IGST CGST as well as SGST this can be utilized to pay CGST or IGST similarly this can be used to pay SGST and IGST 
this is also same that is the UGST and IGST this is the cross utilization and this is also the order that if there is a liability you have the IGST credit you have a liability for IGST, CGST, SGST all you cannot make use of IGST first for paying SGST first of all it should be utilized for IGST then left amount for CGST and thereafter it comes SGST this is the cross utilization then it says comprehend the and apply the chronological order in which the liability of a taxable person has to be discharged so when a person is paying the taxes in which order he should be paying say for example there is a liability outstanding for the month of October 17 there is a liability for November 17 there is a liability for December 17 and now he is paying in January 18 he is paying in January 18 he says I have lowest liability here let me clear this first then when I have sufficient money then I'll pay for October November along with interest loss is no what whenever you pay first of all amount will go here right so in this tax plus interest and penalty if any thereafter at number two the amount will go here and then only you can pay this you do not have a choice of changing the order so that is the chronological order so if you have outstanding first of all any tax paid will be adjusted for the oldest liability then old liability and then recent liability this is how this amount is this is the chronological order in which the tax liabilities will be adjusted then further it says identify and analyze the circumstances in which penal interest is levied penal interest is levied so whenever there is a delay in payment that is there right credit is allowed as soon as entries are made even if it is not matching right but finally when it is decided that the person is not for the benefit of that then that amount will be added in his output liability and that is payable along with interest so interest becomes payable in two situations either there is a delay in payment of the tax or there is any issue related to input credit mainly there are other circumstances also where the liability accrues for payment of interest so this is about identify analyze the circumstances in which the penal interest is there and understand the remedy available in case of the tax wrongfully collected and not paid so government is always having the right to recover the amount right so if you have understood this much in the beginning of the chapter it is as good as you have understood the entire chapter in a capsule